But yeah, so getting back to this crazy thing, these um, spectral processors are just pretty incredible. Now, where'd my sound go? Did I kill my inputs? You moved it to the rear of the room. That's right. Oh, I moved it to the other speaker. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you much. We're in mono here. Um, but yeah, so we have one filter, and then you can go to filter B, and you have a second filter here. Okay, so let's just bring the highs in on filter B, and the lows in on filter A. And so what you have here is a morph between A and B. Right? And so if I want to send a negative voltage to a 258, which I'm already doing, I'm going to send one over to this top 258, kick it down before we get the really slow oscillation. And this um, spectral processor in particular takes an audio source for modulation. So if we jump to program mode here, we can see the both sides being modulated, A and B. Wow. And what's really neat, I'm going to go back, and, and of course, we can really slow that down. And this becomes an LFO, right? And we can see how slow that's really going right now. That makes me so happy. I love the slowness of these modulations. It's, it's beautiful. But one thing that's really neat and fun, and I should show you, is if you, if you put one oscillator all the way up, I'm sorry, one filter all the way up and the other one all the way down. So let's knock that all the way up and put B, B all the way down. Now when we start modulating between, we can actually see the waveforms of the modulation. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, hello, there we go. And as I speed that up, <laughs> check out these visuals. Oh, wow. It's like having a little mini oscilloscope. It's amazing, and I love getting these little centipede things going here, like... <laughs> hold on, there we go. Like that, <sighs> you know? I'm just gonna watch that for a while, you know? Oh it's very God. cool. You're in the middle of a performance and nothing changes for a while because you've become mesmerized by just looking right. at your spectral processor. Absolutely, and you've got um, control here of the modulation, so you can see how it just, now it's a line, you know? it's it, and, and it's slowly being modulated by, as you kick this up, you can increase the width and the range. And as I move over to B, we slow down here. You know, we've got this kind of thing going. B is the silent one. Go over to A. Now we're hearing mostly A. This thing's amazing. And it also is a vocoder. So you can basically vocode against the other input. And, um, and two of them together, so when it goes into vocoding mode, you get half your, it's basically um, an eight band vocoder. Mm -hmm. But if you have two of these, they hook in under, underneath, under the hood here, and you get a true 16 band vocoder, wow. which is very nice. It's a very expensive 16 band vocoder, but based on uh, the Kima talk yesterday, it doesn't fill a room, right? <laughs> it's not a room size vocoder, but yeah, it is, these are fairly expensive modules, but Hey man, you know when you get into this stuff, it's like it's you you just it doesn't matter after a while. Well, this is your instrument. It's I mean, it's just instrument. like my buying a piano or something. Right. I mean, I'm going to buy one piano. Yeah. And I'm gonna if I'm gonna buy one piano, I'm gonna make sure it's the best piano that I can afford. Absolutely. And so it's the same thing with a boucle. I mean, you know, you and I both know Eurorack really well, and it's wonderful. I love Eurorack. But this is yeah. this is just it's this a so different integrated. animal. It's this so is a vision, yeah. right? This is Don's vision. Yeah. And, and um, you know, Eurorack is so beautiful because you can do anything you want if you can find the modules. The module may be available, but you might not be able to find it. Right. right. It might not be in production. Um, but uh, you can configure, you know, we've got a thousand modules in the Eurorack world from over a hundred manufacturers, and that's just astounding to yeah, me. Yeah, it is incredible. You can completely customize your world, and, you know, I, I think Eurorack is very, um, it, it's affordable. You know, I, I wound up getting one of these samplers, it's an eight gigabyte sampler, for $75, yeah. brand new, you know, it, it's... It, amazing that kind of knocks me out um 
And yeah, the Buchla, you know, it has a high price of admission, but when you, when you look at what you're getting, you're getting four envelopes in one, four dynamic managers in one, two sequencers in one, yeah. four sequencers over here, two oscillators in one, two oscillators. So, you know, when you, when you start to factor all that in, and, and then the overall vision of Don, you know, we've got... The beautiful thing is the consistency of the, the system. You always have your inputs on the bottom, you have your outputs on the top. Your CVs are always bananas. Your, your audio is always um, eighth inch. Um, you know, some people might look at that as a limitation, not being able to convert a CV to an audio signal and vice versa. But when you're in the workflow, all the color coding of the CVs and the segregation of the CVs is actually your friend. It doesn't get in the way. Yeah. It really is akin to a real-time workflow and just a creative workflow. You know, it just allows you not to have. Happen. So uh, it, it allows you not to have to think about every choice. It constricts your choices to the most musically useful ones that you're trying to deal with at the moment. Right. It really does. It, it, it's 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 you're not second guessing anything. Sure, it's all about experimentation. But when you're in the heat of the moment, you know that a red output. Is, is for a pulse and, a, and a, an orange input is for a pulse input yeah. so that's a red is pulse output that's just good user interface it's really design good user interface yeah. design you know the black uh or cv out or cv input control for these um knobs the blues are the cv outs that you're playing with yeah. and then he, he gets more creative with colors over here these are all outputs but we've got blue and purple denoting even so, and odd right that's wonderful beautiful. and this this unit outputs in a beautiful stereo odd and even so you can get tremendous stereo effects just by touching this playing wow. around with it cv modulating it and then you know you start playing with the vocoder it's it's just incredible um, I'd like to touch on something that you mentioned just a little bit, but we haven't looked at, and I hear about this all the time in your Eurorecland, and that is the yeah. source of uncertainty. Oh, yes, right. Well, that's the, the infamous module, you know, from Don, and, and one of the keys to West Coast versus East Coast. Right. You know? um, the fact that, you know, what we're doing here is, is we can set this thing in motion, this electronic orchestra in motion, and I can just step back and be the conductor of this orchestra. Uh -huh. I can step in and be a solo performer if I want and have the orchestra back me up, or I can just kind of push it in different directions, cut it off, do whatever, man. You know, what? It, it's, it's incredible to have all these controlled random sources to enhance your music and uh, so the source of uncertainty has a number of random type modules for one is just the fluctuating random voltage which is that we have control here of the probable rate of change so we've got 0 0.05 Hertz all the way up to 50 Hertz and you know so you could think of that as an LFO that who knows what the waveform is going to be, mm -hmm. but you have control of the rate. Um, and these quantized random voltages require a trigger. Um, so they must have a pulse in order to fire a pulse out. And what happens here is, um, in fact, we can just demonstrate this. Um, if I take the CV out here and uh, we still plugged in with our harmonic, let's just go right to the, um, uh, complex waveform generator. So we'll go over here and uh, take this to the mixer, just straight to the mixer. And wow, that's nice. I don't know if you can hear that, but wow, what harmonics that is. Mm -hmm. um, so taking uh, this bottom one, which is being triggered by the pendulum ratchet over here, we can see that um, this clock divider is going to trigger this random voltage source. So I'll plug in uh, the CV. Okay, so let's see what's going on here. I might have to gnaw my blue knobs. Okay, so we're hearing... We're getting a fluctuation now between two tones. Okay. And as we knock this up to three, now we're getting three tones. And, and now we'll fluctuate between four or five or eight or ten. 
So that's kind of cool. It's a quantized voltage source that you have control on on the amount of randomness. We're on um, a high correlation right now. So this little diagram of a, you know says that we're not going to get much change. It's going to be pretty much focused mm -hmm. to these tones. But if we switch that to flat, now we're random. And so we're going to get 10 random tones and they're just going to be continually changing. Is it going to be the same 10 random no, tones? No, it's constantly going to change. I see. Because it's in this kind of flat time correlation right now. And so if we just bring this down to three tones or two tones. Well, I'm not hearing that much fluctuation actually. But Yeah, I would expect this to have more randomization at this point. I might be doing something stupid. Um, and if we bring the density up here, we'll get a more rhythmic output. Let's bring the time correlation up and see if there's a difference. Pretty much similar tones, but mm -hmm. I'm not hearing much of a difference here. They still sound like the same tones. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Um, but then you also have a similar variation here. The stored random the stored voltage. random voltages. Uh huh. Where you have your time correlation of of closer to fixed or little variation to more variation. And let's see if we can hear something on this one. I'll have to send a pulse. So there's some randomness. Sure is. Right? There's some randomness. Let's bring that down to one, two. So that's fluctuating. Let's bring it to more controlled. Let's increase the CV here. Here's our range. Uncertainty. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> and you can constrain the uh, variation in that range by this knob. And you can skew the pitch by this knob. Wow, that is fascinating. Boy, this whole thing together sure does make for something that's just great for abstract synthesis. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's amazing um, and forever inspiring. Do you have anything else to uh, show us before we wrap up here? Uh, there are a couple modules we haven't really touched on. Okay. Uh, we, we, we looked at the um, quad, uh, at the um, system interface here, mm -hmm. which is basically an EQ and our output controls. We have a little sub mixer that you can insert to the mix or not. What's really neat about this sub mixer, you got inputs A, B, C, and D. Each one of these goes out to a speaker. So uh -huh. if you're working in quad, A goes to left, B goes to right, C is right surround, and D is left surround. And you can insert that into the mix, or you can, so it'll go to the outputs, or you can just use it as a sub mixer if you want, and have your outputs here to feed to another module. And of course, if you're using it as a sub mixer, it's not being hardwired to the four speakers. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this module has the swirl, has all the quadraphonic panning, has a mic preamp, there's actually oh, super a mic, useful. Yeah, a mic uh, connection in the back, and that mic has a um, an envelope follower, so that's really cool, especially for collaborating with folks or, or integrating another instrument. And just to quickly jump, this is another mixer. I don't think you can ever have enough mixers. <laughs> um, and this is just a stereo mixer. It's my auxiliary output, but you know, I, I just love to stack sounds and be able to mix between them, and so this really gives me more than what I need, which is great. And this also contains the preset manager. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, there, it seems like because of the fact that he's got five U to play with, a lot of the utility stuff he can gang two things together so they don't take up as much width. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
And, um, and this is a clone module from uh, Vitexcapes. Um, I believe he's in Sweden. Um, and this is a pretty amazing module. I'm still kind of trying to figure this out. It's, it's a filter, a multi-mode feedback filter. Uh -huh. But it's purely analog. It's beautiful. It's got amazing distortion out of it. Great frequency modulation out of it. Still exploring that one. It's beautiful. Wow. This one here is the quad voltage processor, or quad control voltage processor, the 256E. And this is essentially processing voltages. And this is how I'm getting my negative scale to slow this oscillator down, you know, for these really ultra slow modulations over mm -hmm. here. If we to, were to scale that normally, that's where that oscillator would normally Got it. Be, be running at. And this is the slowest it can go. That's Got it. the slowest it can go without a negative voltage source. So here's our input, here's our output. That's basically a linear curve. We can flip that curve around and now we've really scaled this down to such a slow rate. In fact, I'm bringing the oscillator back up halfway and it's still slower than it was all the way down. Wow. You know, so th this is like, when I found this up, this was like a holy grail for me um, in terms of modulation and slowing things down. Um, and if I look quickly, we've got our pendulum, pendulum ratchet here, which is from Ear Drill, Chris Muir, who makes amazing stuff. And this is such a cool module. Um, if I pull this, the top portion is the clocking or the speed, as Chris calls the pendulum. And it's got a tock and a tick. And the tick hmm. is the hardwired output. The tock is the one controlled by the density. So we can see the tick is always flowing at whatever rate the frequency is here. So you can use that as a master clock for other things that can be without a master mucking clock, around with it. Yeah. And then the talk is simply, you can turn it all the way off, but my density now is at 50%. Kick the density all the way out, these two are mirrored. And then you, you run a jumper down here to control the ratchet. And the ratchet, this is so cool. You got two divisors here, uh -huh. division A and division B. And if you look at what you have, you've got odd, even, prime, triplet, Fibonacci, and power of two. Wow. And so what this is, this is just insta rhythms. You don't have to program a thing. Mm -hmm. And you can just turn a knob and, and get rhythms oscillating against each other between the A and B dividers. And then you have a whole clock divider here. Um, just a standard clock divider, so you can see what's going on with that. It eventually, you know, hits the tw divided by 24, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a just a cool module for triggering the source of uncertainty, triggering any kind of rhythmic envelopes, stuff like that. Absolutely love it. And I think the last module is the triple morphing filter, the 291E. Now. Ezra Buchla told me this was his favorite module at one point, and I'm still trying to figure out why it's his favorite module. For me, I like this module, but it's more of like a programming thing. It's not really hands-on. It's barely, ha like um, this almost does nothing if we were listening to it. Hmm. You have to get in here and program every stage, and each stage has a morph between milliseconds to 10 seconds to get to the next stage. That's pretty powerful. In fact, there's a whole sequencer with eight stages here that has its own internal clock. And then you have three filters that you can play around with. So you can see the menuing on this system is pretty deep. Oh yeah. And uh, it's nowhere near as tacked out as other modules. So I, I haven't explored it so much, but it is powerful. And you have to be a little careful with with the uh, resonance, the bandwidth. You can bring it into a distortion, and I don't necessarily like the distortion so much on this one. But we you also know, have the frequency shifter over oh, here. Oh, we do, we have this guy in the corner. Yeah. And yeah, this is a frequency shifter and a balanced modulator. Okay. Um, so if we, uh, let's just throw one of these timbres into here. The signal input, and let's take an output and see what it's doing. Hello, I got a bad cable. I heard a signal for a second. Oh, it's on the other speaker, there we go. So yeah, we, you know, here's our balance modulator. You can feed it FM input, um, an external source if you want. I don't have one patched up, but we're on an internal oscillator here. 
So that's, you know, compared to the, uh, the raw sound, wow. it's pretty nice. And then we have a similar thing here with the frequency shifter. I need a longer cable. So what's the top section of the frequency shifter, Tom? It, it's the actual frequency shifter portion. Uh -huh. And we have two different outputs. We have a down output and an up output, which will give you two variants of the frequency shift. Right now we're listening to the up output. Uh -huh. If I jump to the down, we'll hear it. it's a Very different, different transposition. Different and they work together um, to give you some nice stereo output. You know, if you want to pan it hard left, hard right, or, or start swirling it in the quad space. Um, so yeah, man, this world is just amazingly inspirational. Um, you know, I got into it kind of late in life. All my, all my, my life I've been working with samplers. I actually shunned synthesis because of the late 80s and 90s. I did not like the synthesis. The romplers, I, 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 was, the I was right there with you, man. And I blame the DX7 for the loss of knobs. And I didn't have the money nor the foresight at the time to dig into analog because that was the time to get all the deals on the old analog stuff. Yeah. But, you know, after working with sampling for 20, 25 years, I needed to light a fire and, uh, I, you know, under my butt. I needed something new. And this was certainly it. And I call it my mod life crisis. <laughs> I didn't buy a Harley, I bought a spaceship. I totally you know? get it. I... I'm not going to physically injure myself, I'm just going to go off into strange worlds. And, uh, and uh, no one will find you again. And, yeah, I might not come back. <laughs> well, well, listen, um, Thomas DiMuzio, I want to thank you so much for taking so much of your time uh, to show our audience this incredible, incredible instrument that's pretty hard to see because as, as you said, it's not like they have these at the store. You know, That's it's, right. It's not like it's at the local Best Buy. Um, so thank you for that. Where can, uh, where can people find out more information about you on the web and your work? Oh, well, uh, there are two places. Uh, the first place would be thomasdemusio.com. That would be T-H-O-M-A-S-D-I-M-U-Z-I-O. Com. And that's got a bunch of my music up there, a bunch of free stuff. You can download it, MP3s, high quality MP3s, and just way too much information about the stuff that I do. So be careful over there. And the other place is Gench.com. That's G-E-N-C-H.com. And I'm a mastering engineer, and that features a lot of my work in the professional audio domain as far as being an audio engineer. Um, and Gensch is also kind of my label, uh, you know, a really poorly run label, but a means to at least release things out to the world. So please visit and enjoy, and uh, I hope you got a little bit out of this demo. Well, I personally certainly did. Thank you again, Thomas DiMuzio, and I'm going up on the web to go check you out for sure. Thank you, Nick. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. So that's it for this episode of Under the Big Tree. Thanks so much to Thomas DiMuzio for letting us see his Buchla 200E modular synthesizer. If you have anything to add to the conversation, please feel free to add it in the comments below. And as always, if you like what we're doing here on Under the Big Tree, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. For now, this is Nick, signing off.